All right. So today, Erica and I are going through the process of uh, mapping jobs. Um, and I am taking the reference of the old mapping that I had done about one and a half years ago, uh, which might not be perfect, but this is what we are going to base our discussion on. So how I started uh, with this mapping is, um, I'm not sharing my screen and I totally should. All right, is it visible yeah. enough? Okay, great. Yeah. So I started off with the kind of making a note of the core functional jobs uh, that users come to perform when we are talking about all things verify. So at this stage, I was not even like focusing a lot on just pipeline execution or just continuous integration. I was thinking of everything that uh, users would want to do with the features that we kind of group under verify. And from there, um, I consolidated the core jobs into this one particular statement. And this statement says, uh, to standardize and automate tests, builds, and deploy process across organization to allow easy contribution while keeping the main branch green, which is main branch healthy. Um, and I like kept this as a reference uh, for the core job that we are uh, going to be referring to. The next part was thinking of uh, who would be executing the jobs. So the circles so in the innermost circle are the core executors. So for core executors, I thought of uh, personas that we very frequently refer to, like the DevOps engineers, the software engineer, the uh, developer. And a little outside that uh, circle on its periphery, I was uh, imagining personas such as um, system administrator, compliance manager, release manager, development team lead, because um, in the process that release managers follow and compliance managers follow, they, the processes, they are very much kind of um, around pipelines because pipelines enables uh, the release process and following the compliance guidelines. And then, um, who else can use pipelines and related features? The idea is anybody can, because uh, taking a reference of a company like GitLab where we work, um, everybody runs pipelines, everybody merges their changes. So everybody kind of interacts with that in their day-to-day -day job. And I kind of skipped this part uh, because I was not able to get a very good hang of like, what's the uh, value that this is adding. And I'm not saying that that was really great step on my part, but um, just stating that it wasn't uh, like, yeah. Coming to the job map part. So we have these stages which come predefined. And I try to segregate all the um, primary, not primary, all the uh, jobs that were kind of that, that were documented here earlier into these buckets, uh, into these different stages, uh, let's say. And I started off like, if we talk about defining and we talk about uh, pipelines, then what are the jobs which are, are relevant at that stage? And of course, what's relevant is defining uh, a new pipeline, but uh, to put it in a more functional way uh, without focusing a lot on the uh, tool and the exact mechanism that we are providing today. So I, I wrote that defining standard, standards, tests, and commands for uh, organizations to test, build, and deploy. Uh, this was written keeping in mind uh, that users have to author the pipeline before they can even, uh, before they can do anything else with it. Then comes the part of locating. So make a, uh, aware of available test suite or explain the process for using the existing pipeline um, and so on. So what I saw was uh, since we had made this division in the responsibilities of the two stage groups, pipeline authoring and pipeline execution. And uh, we mentioned that everything that relates to defining the pipeline or editing a pipeline, it's uh, under the purview of pipeline authoring. And while the pipeline is running, that's when uh, it is uh, like, it comes under the categories under pipeline execution. So 
it starts with like where would we make the uh, like this option available to users to um, avail the automated tests and processes. Um, that's where we, we are talking about the discovery of all features which are related to uh, pipeline execution or continuous integration. Next was just confirming, um, like enable using environment specific process. Uh, so this particular stage, uh, we are only talking about like maybe confirming the action. And next was when P pipeline has already started to execute. So when the, um, I'm using the term pipeline here, which is not ideal. And I just want to uh, make a note that we are still talking about those automated tests. Uh, but since it's just like, I'm going through the process, so I'm just using terms which are not very well thought of. Yeah, and you, so when we come to the execute stage, this is exactly what uh, pipeline execution categories take care of. Like when the, your pipeline is running, when the runner is uh, picking up jobs, executing those, uh, what is the job? What, what is the real job that we are referring to here? What is uh, is was it what, what what is it that users have uh, come to do on GitLab that we are making happen through these uh, through this set of feature, and the next was then, monitoring. Uh, yeah. That, no, um, so this is perfect. But where do the devs come in? Like, and so so is this execute like between the handoff between stage four and stage five? Is that how we distinguish authoring from? from execution? Uh, not really. So I think that defining is a part that's mostly played by DevOps engineers, other team right. leads. And it kind of, yeah. um, I mean, it's not something very hard and fast because it totally depends on the composition of the teams. Like uh, if, if it's a very short team, then maybe there's one developer who's responsible uh, for the pipeline as well, apart from the day-to-day -day job of writing the software. But in like big enterprise teams, there would be a dedicated DevOps engineer, or uh, there might even be an SRE who's going to take uh, complete responsibilities of uh, all things that relates to defining the, or writing the pipeline or editing the pipeline. So where the handoff really happens is, um, I would say, not even locate prepare um, because when developers are merging their changes, they are looking for initiating these automated tests. And once they initiate that and confirm, this is actually the part where uh, their role kicks in. Okay. And then yeah, and course, that's like, and uh, they, um, to some degree, the people upstream are defining defining the tests, or do mm -hmm. we do we think the devs define the tests, or are they just running them? They're just running them because they cannot define anymore. The definition of the pipeline has already been written, and they they only okay. can avail what's already there. Okay, got it. Okay, keep yeah. going. Yeah, and the next part is of course monitor because when when the jobs are being executed uh, at that time, there would be some degree of anxiety among the uh, developers. Like, I initiated this. Uh, I have other things to look at. How is this progressing? Would I have to come back and dedicate more time to this? So they want some sort of peace of mind, uh, and that's where the monitoring part comes in. They want to easily. Uh, be able to examine and monitor the running pipeline and observe if um, like the safety measures are uh, in place. For example, they want to be uh, assured that the variables that they're passing through the jobs, they're not getting leaked anywhere. There's no security threat that's uh, underway. And in case something goes uh, here and there, like not as expected, then there is a chance of modifying, like there's a scope to modify the definition. But again, one has to have the proper, the right access to make those modifications. And here the same person who can define can also modify. So maybe this, this is a reverse handoff, like where the developers are communicating with the <laughs> DevOps engineers. 
Okay, cool. Good. And stage seven, handoff. Okay. And then are they, tell me a little bit about stage four or stage five. Are they in, what do we think they're doing in stage five? Yeah, so stage four, um, if I talk to you in terms of like the exact action that you are performing on the uh, product. So when you, when you click on uh, like creating the merge request, when, when the creation of MR is initiated, at the same time, uh, the pipeline also gets started. So that's one. And then another option to do this is uh, when you go to your pipeline page, pipeline index page, and you click on the blue button, which is on the top right corner that says run pipeline. That's when you're confirming that action, which is initiating a pipeline. So that's where the execution begins. Okay. And the devs do that for sure. Yes, yes, right? devs do that. Okay. Okay, cool. And then five, do my code. Yeah, five is monitoring. So this can be targeting like both the personas. Uh, I know that jobs have to be persona agnostic, but uh, talking in terms of like who's doing, the, who's the, who the main executor here is. Uh, yeah. Developers are expecting different things when they are talking about monitoring the pipelines and the DevOps engineers or someone sitting like at the very top but at the director level, they are expecting something very different from monitoring. They want to see like, uh, in terms of usage, how well, things are promising. Go back to execute, because even the execute looks like in, the, in this version of, of the world that execute is running the tests. Yes. So all of that seems like really security based. And I, I think that's right in this job agnostic way, but I think that one way we could frame that so that it would kind of cover like kind of what you're saying about that coming from other people. And I'm in this study where we're looking at the pro, like the life cycle for infrastructure resources and talking about those different components and who, and also for secrets and who's in charge of those systems. It's not, it's sometimes the DevOps people, but it's coming from a CTO or like yeah. a security officer or like they're, so they're doing that in coordination. So one thing we could do is, frame that stage in terms of um, like wor I work with my team to align with our security standards. Yes, yeah, that, that's a really great point. That's something that I definitely missed uh, like noting here that even though like the executor, especially in the context yeah. of the execute state, it's, it's, it might be the developer, but the job that uh, the job the, the user who the job should target might be someone totally different, the compliance manager or the yeah. release manager or whoever, who's but they're, concerned. They're working together. Yes. Like it's just team, it's teamwork. Yeah. Yeah. So one thing that I saw in the video today, in a, one of the videos that I was watching is, um, so there the person talked about that, let's say you're working for a B2B company and you have a buyer but the buyer is not your user the buyer is uh, like of course purchasing from you but you should never like uh, build the persona uh, build the jobs to be done targeting the buyer because it has to be about the user what the user is trying to accomplish so even though we are not talking about the buyer here but uh, in terms of who the jobs to be done should target like the end uh, user of that um, I think in this case, it's different set of people. Yeah. Or at least they're in control and the developers are working within those. Um, yes. Call it guardrails. Yeah. Okay. And then stage six. Stage six. Yes. Um, so like I had mentioned that from stage six, uh, different kind of uh, Personas would have different expectations. Uh, here, 
it's weird because now when I think of it, that even though this involves like defining the core executors at the very beginning, I think the core executors for every stage is different. Yeah. Yeah. Because, okay. because I, I'm thinking that, yeah, the de in stage six, the devs are hands-on again, right? Yes. Or maybe, it's, yeah, okay. Yep. But should it matter like who's the most hands-on or should, should it matter like yeah. whose concern is this uh, a particular stage attending to? Well, I, I think that's why the jobs to be done, at least this is the page, this is the like handbook page with Jackie's video that like I, I can understand it. So, cause the job can be anybody that does it, but eventually the persona, when it becomes a jobs to be done, the persona steps in. Cause it says in this handbook of pages says job deploy and build and deploy software. And then job performer is an element of jobs to be done. And that brings in the persona, hmm. which is part of the circumstance. Yes. But I could get us in a lot of trouble because I'm not sure that I'm tracking <laughs> how we do it here. But but that's how I think it. That's that's what I mean. Like we want to just be able to pull out not the jobs to be done, but, but even just the job. Um, but I think the job is more about like kind of how we said making the releases more efficient in a way that is secure. Yeah. Or that meets the security requirements needed within my company. Yeah, I think uh, thinking in the constraint, uh, only thinking in the constraint of the uh, executor personas that we shortlisted at the beginning, I think that's a wrong approach. That kind of uh, limits in some way, like how we are defining the jobs to be done. And it might not be the, because a developer would never be too concerned about the uh, compliance standards or the security standards. It would always be somebody else. But if I only think of like what the developer is trying to achieve here, uh, I might get things wrong. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, I think we want to just talk to them about, <clears throat> about these about what they're trying to do because some of them I've talked to are in charge of security stuff but they're yeah. not like the the author kind of how we're kind of how we're doing it um we can also have a discussion around this yeah no and I think that I mean I, and even now like what I one question I have is just like where does Nadia's work stop up and then your work pick up. I mean, I'm not even sure there. <laughs> uh, so this modify part where I talked about a reverse handover, uh, yeah. this is Nadia's and okay. then this is Nadia's define and to some extent locate. Okay, I think that's what, I'm, I think I'm always wanting to make it like a literal break off, but that's good, okay. Um, yeah. Yeah, and then I did this small exercise of prioritization. At this point, I couldn't tell like what the colors denote because I was smart enough not to make an index for that. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, we, we had a um, synchronous session, me and the PM, and we talked about like which are the uh, most important and uh, most important personas, but least satisfied. So we marked them as opportunities for ourselves. Like this is the area where we should be thinking of making improvements. Uh, in our future uh, plans for categories. And then, yeah, I mean, it feels like we're implicitly mapping the personas to the stages, but what if we just make the job, making the release, making the releases, is it of my software, of my software? more efficient in a way that meets the security requirements of software. We shouldn't say my then. Making the releases of software more efficient in a way that meets the security requirements of our company. Our company requir 
in the way that meets company security requirements. Because that would cover this whole flow. That's also what confuses me is whether or not the job needs to cover a whole flow or <laughs> it yeah. needs to be with that's stages. where the elevation and the granularity that mapping comes into picture so we can like if we map it, map it as a reverse triangle then what you're saying that can totally be the uh, core jobs to be done which is at the highest level and then when we yes. try to like break it further it would be uh, it, it would cover the flow okay I love that reverse triangle. Yep. Okay. And then, okay, let's talk about a little bit about where the merge trains come in. So let me tell you, and then you, I think the merge trains come in at five, stage five. Yes, they do. That's right. Okay. And then the, but, 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 what was that other thing? Yeah, so I think, so, because we were talking about combining those two studies. Mm -hmm. So I think that's how we can kind of think about it, is like mapping out, can we think about it like mapping out the jobs to be done across this one job workflow? Merge trains, execute. I'm going to just uh, make a note for- The one yeah. job workflow, the one that you mentioned about- uh the one that you had framed yeah seconds per, yeah that can be uh so in in my case i had something for the core job in like it, for the new mapping what you mentioned could be our uh core job i think so yeah the top of the triangle one or yes. the funnel and then i think because what, what our main research goal can be um or where our main research question can be, would be to figure out, where did I write it? I wrote it. Yeah, how do we help developers to, how do we, yeah, here it is. How do we help developers, or no, how do we help users? Cause we don't wanna say yeah. users to make their releases more efficient. So that could be of this combined research study, we can say that's our primary goal. Like that would be the name of the research study. And then kind of our, our approach could be We could even like have, we could even have these stages here and then say like, walk us through your process with these stages. Like ideally they would show us in the tool, but they are sometimes not what they don't want to do that. <laughs> so we could just put this in a deck and then have them talk through, like first just say, where are you involved in this flow, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then say, okay, now unpack, what are your goals here? What are you trying to do? And what are your key tasks? So yeah, that's, what do you think? That sounds good, it yeah. It can be critical though. Yeah, because my current plan was uh, kind of to create the initial mapping by myself and then go to validation. But this is so much better because we won't have to like take a U-turn at any part of the process. Yeah. I think so. And then we just get them to kind of tell us. And it's like, ideally we wouldn't do that, but this is such a technical space that I think it's defensible that we would just, right? <laughs> like, cause we're not asking me, yeah, I think it's right. So, okay. So the method would be to interview, to work through, <clears throat> uh, the different stages involved in pipelines to see where our users are working and what their goals are. 
Do you think they'll recognize these parts or it doesn't matter? We can even just say, um, we can even just say, this is how we're defining. This is an in define, locate, prepare, confirm. Is that coming from us in any way or? That's not coming from us. That's actually coming from the uh, jobs to be done template. So if you think like changing this to and even combining a few stages would help, which I think would help. For example, I don't see like very clear differentiation between prepare and confirm here. It's kind okay. of. So maybe similar. that's another. Maybe that's an idea too. Is maybe what we do first is just say, from your perspective, <clears throat> let's map out mm -hmm. what are the different stages. Hmm. Like card sorting, sort of, but or, or, without yeah. providing cards. <laughs> well, well, yeah. yeah. Uh, like what I end up doing, I, I I'll show you one of these sessions. But what I end up doing is like just like making shapes with them and like having them talk about it. Like, so what we're doing right now with the um, the secrets life cycle is just to be like, tell me about a secret. What's the beginning? What's the middle? What's the end? And then they kind of articulate it there. But in that one, we're like, who, what, where, when? But I think in this one, we would just be like, so where does your process start? But I'm not, the only thing I'm not sure about there is like, how we frame it yeah <clears throat> so keeping it open-ended but uh kind of nudging them to define the stages themselves yeah, yeah. and what's what do we say that what is it the stages of <laughs> what is it what do we how do we say it uh how do you from your perspective what are the stages of a pipeline of pipeline uh, execution of pipeline. Um, what are the stages of? How you work with or, your or team. should we like keep it a little more generic and talk about yeah. what are yeah. the stages of verifying your code? Got it. Yeah, and you know what we can say too, like we can say like not from your perspective or like what, I mean, that's fine too, but we could just say, Tell us how your teams are breaking up the process of verifying your code into stages. Hmm. I'm liking where this is going. Yay. Yeah, this is the kind of information that uh, they never asked for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we want to step back. Um, yeah. Tell us how your team, especially if you have the bandwidth, Tell us how your teams are breaking up the process of verifying your code. Mm -hmm. And the good part is the same uh, set of information can also be useful for Gina and Nadia. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, because they're, they're in this flow too, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. At, at some point we'll need to put, where is, can we do it now really quickly? <laughs> it will help my brain. Which okay. stages are, is Gina doing? Uh, Pipeline Insights and Runner. But in this, I like these stages. Oh, They're okay. Different. All right. <laughs> okay. I thought stage groups. So that's what was going on in my mind. So here. Maybe we, uh, should, call them, maybe we should call them steps so we don't confuse ourselves. Uh, I we, think Execute. Execute is where uh, both the stage groups that Gina is working with would uh, very well fit. Okay. And Sorry, the pipeline insights can be more about monitor, I guess. Stage six. Yes. And runner is, of course, execute because when the uh, jobs are being executed, that's when the role of runner kicks in. Okay. So I have to look up here. So stage one, da, 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 da. so stage five is Gina when she's doing runners. Yes. Run, how does how, one day we'll talk about how runners and merge trains <laughs> interact? It's all in that. It's hopefully in that blog post. Okay, uh, cool. Yeah. Okay. Well, it seems like um, maybe let's stop recording. Are we recording still? Yes, yeah, we recording. are recording still. <laughs> okay, good. No, let's stop it. <laughs> let's talk calendars now. So <laughs> we don't need to. Okay, we, need to we can stop. Brilliant. That was a brilliant. Yeah, yeah. That was so good.
Yay, that was so fun too. Okay. Should I stop now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, I'm stopping.